Hello, so today I'm going to show you how I make ambient sounds using uh, as little game footage as possible. So, so I've just got some inspiration here. These are concept art from a guy called Vadim Kashin, um, who I found on ArtStation. The really great thing about Reaper is that you can just drag in almost any file format and it will just play. So this is one that I like. You can see the video window changes with the playhead. So I want to get about at least a minute's worth of ambience. So I'm just going to drag these. Cool. Now as I play, it's going to change the scenes and I can make different sound effects for each scene. Right now I've just brought in a bunch of ambient sounds that I'm going to chop up and loop uh, for different sections of the pictures. You can just solo some of these. So we have a whole bunch of uh, different sounds that I'm going to mix together and hopefully make a nice, um, consistent ambient background loop. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, you can set up an action to uh, solo your tracks on and off. Uh, what I like to use is Shift S, like Pro Tools. Uh, if you go into your actions, go into your actions list, find shortcut. It's toggle solo for last touch track and I just assigned it to Shift S, and that does the same job that uh, Pro Tools will do. So I've got some ambience sounds into Reaper. This loop I'm gonna have is just a bass loop for all of the sounds in the jungle. This is to kind of give the uh, area consistency, and I'll just have it really low in the mix as a sort of almost a room tone. Um, then during the lighter or slightly more um, daybreak areas, like uh, like this one, here and here, I can have these um, more in-depth loops. I've panned this loop hard left and I've panned this loop hard right. This both comes from uh, this recording. As you can see here, uh, the right has been recorded much louder than the left for some reason. I decided that the right was a bit more in depth and had a better quality of sound to it. So I um, went to item settings and just changed it to um, mono right. Then with that, I found two different points and I just uh, split them left and right. Um, so this is what it sounds like. As you can hear, it's a little bit too wide. So as you can see with um, all three of them playing at the, at the same time, it's got a little bit more of a consistency to it. So, I'm going to have the left and right channel playing at different lengths. And the reason for this is just to give more variation to the listener. So, an example of this would be, say the loop is this long. And every so often, you get something which is recognizable to the ear and then you play it again in a loop and then here's the same signifier play it again in a loop here's the same signifier if you have a loop on the other side which is also the same and you have a signifier there and a signifier there and a signifier there this will always sound exactly the same to the listener whereas if you have different lengths you can have this one this long this one this long and this one slightly shorter and you have a signifier here and a signifier here and here you have a signifier here 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 and here this way you get a lot more variation between the two signifiers on the left and right obviously these are a little bit too short but I'm just using it as an example then if you have a third um, more neutral stem in the middle this is my sort of room tony stem which will be barely audible if you have another sort of signifier here and then it loops again you can hear a signifier here 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 you can see if the loops are consistent you'll always get duh 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 with this one you'll get duh duh 
da, 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 da. So it's just a better way of doing things for the listener and it gives them more variation. So the best way to make an ambient loop is just to zoom in and find the zero crossing, which is where your, uh, where your waveform passes the zero dB mark. I'm just gonna split my waveform here, and separate. Uh, then we zoom out and we bring the loop, we bring the audio clip round and just try and find a place where um, it sounds good to crossfade. Great, so you can't really tell that anything's being crossfaded there, which is exactly what we want. So I'll just duplicate this and play from here. No clicks, no need to crossfade or dip. And here we have a loop, a perfect loop. So we can just glue that together. And now we have supposedly a perfect loop. Let's just duplicate that, Command D and see if it loops nicely. Stereo recordings, it's a little bit more tricky because you have to find the um, zero crossing with both the left and the right channel. But luckily, Reaper has a special function for this. So if we just zoom in, you can press Option Z, which is Alt Z, and it automatically cuts it right there. Perfect. So now let's zoom out. Do the same again. Make sure this. Great, that works. Duplicate. No problem. Uh, the reason why this is so much smaller in waveform is because I had a equalizer on my clip effects. Now we're just going to take a look at the rain. Um, this is pretty similar. There's just several different um, loops that I'm going to use. Again, there's a left and right loop. One for the middle. And then I have this one, which I quite like. It's got sort of um, quite heavy raindrops. So it sounds like it's quite close by that the rain's hitting the uh, leaves around you. And I've um, got a little effect on that. I specifically did um, band pass here. So it hasn't got the sort of highs of the rest of the rain or the lows. Um, but as you can see, there's some um, dynamic EQ that kind of just pokes out the, the droplets. So yeah, that's a nice little touch for the rain. Then we have all the different animal sounds uh, that will have um, random triggers and be spread left and right in a scatter sound. Um, so here's some of the, was that monkeys? Monkeys, parrots, uh, frogs. For all of these, I've used EQs uh, and reverb. Um, so I've just tried to really find the relatable frequencies that they, they need. So there's no point in having any of the lows or the, the highs there because these are all going to be um, pushed back in the mix. Um, I also did a little bit of corrective EQ on some of them because uh, without these, it can sound a little bit too close and a little bit too harsh. So I just pulled this down to make it sound a little bit more like it's consistent with the rest of the mix and that it's a little bit further away from the listener. And I've just done this with pretty much all of the animal sounds. Right, so lastly we have to export all our files. Um, for this I'm going to use some of Reaper's 
great features. Um, first of all, I want to space all of these evenly out because I've got a reverb on them and I don't want anything to um, over overlap the reverb. So the first thing I'm going to do is shift command R and just say that all my items will start exactly two seconds um, after the end of the next clip. I've already done that with these ones at the bottom. But here you can see that they're nicely spaced out and that my reverb tail is not going to overlap anything. Um, after that, I'm going to select all of them, name the track that I want uh, the items to be called. So for example, this is Frog California Tree, that's the Californian tree frog. Um, then Alt Command R, do selected media items here. I don't want a tail. Mm, actually, I do want a tail because of the reverb. So one second should be fine. That's a thousand milliseconds. Then select wildcards, track and item number. Track and item number. That way it will be file named whatever you've named your track and then whatever order they'll have a corresponding number. So that will be monkey angry chatter one, monkey angry chatter two, and so forth. Parrot squawking one, two, three, and so forth in that order. Uh, choose the correct file path that you want and then render your items. This is really great as well. You can see that most of them are landing around minus six, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, there may be one peaking a little bit much there, but I can sort that out in wise. Um, and then we have all our uh, assets exported almost instantly. Here we can just double check that everything's uh, worked all right. Animal tree frog. Great. Brilliant. And that's all done.